Hey there, Pimple Stoppers. In this video, we're gonna talk about acne scarring, the different types of acne scars, and the best way to address them. To start, let's talk about what are the different kinds of acne scars that can happen. There are two main categories of acne scars. There are atrophic acne scars. This is a depressed kind of acne scar. There are a dent in the skin. And then there are hypertrophic or keloidal acne scars. And these acne scars, the skin is raised. There's a bump on top of the skin. When we think about atrophic acne scars, there are mainly three kinds of types. There are icepick acne scars. These ones are less than one or two millimeters in diameter, and they're kind of like a V-shape. They tend to be wider at the top and narrower at the base. And these are caused by the skin was damaged by that acne breakout, that inflammation hurt the collagen, the structure in the skin. And as that collagen and structure was lost, there became almost like a depression, like when you get a sinkhole and erode. The next kind of atrophic acne scars are called rolling acne scars. These are bigger than ice pick acne scars. They're usually a few millimeters in diameter and they have, by their name, kind of rolled edges. They have these kind of curvy, ill-defined edges to them. They kind of go up and down like hills in the countryside. These acne scars, there's both damage to the dermis, to that scaffolding, that collagen, just like we can have with ice pick acne scars, but there's also often some deeper damage, some scarring under the skin that's tethering it and pulling it down in certain areas, and that's what's causing that tenting and that depression and causing that rolling type of appearance. The last kind of atrophic acne scars are boxcar acne scars. These are bigger than those ice pick acne scars. They're usually two to four or even more millimeters wide, so they're very wide. And unlike rolling scars, they have sharp borders. They look like a boxcar. They're rectangular in shape. Instead of having those rolled kinds of borders, these ones are more, there's normal skin, boom, atrophic acne scar, and then back to normal skin. These boxcar scars are very similar in their cause to the ice pick scars. There's damage to the dermis, that collagen structure, but here the extent is bigger. The lesions were more inflammatory, the skin was more greatly damaged, and so we have a bigger scar than those ice pick scars. Moving on to hypertrophic and keloidal scars here, there was damage to the skin, and in the body's healing response, there was too much disorganized new collagen laid down. There was damage to that collagen structure and the skin and the dermis. And as the body tried to heal it, it went a bit overboard. It put too much collagen and it did it in a haphazard, disorganized way. And this leads to this sticking up of the skin, this bump in the skin that we can get with hypertrophic or keloidal scarring. So some different kinds of scarring and each of these really have best kinds of treatments that can work for them. Now, the first thing to keep in mind is that for very small scars, so scars less than one millimeter in diameter, if we just follow them over time, there's some evidence to suggest that about 50% of them can improve. So small scars, less than one millimeter in diameter, these can often improve with time or sometimes with topical treatment. However, bigger scars, those more than one and a half millimeters in diameter, only 3% of those improved over time in the study. So when we're thinking about acne scars, if they're big, wide, deep scars, they're probably not gonna get better with time. They're probably not gonna get better with any kind of topical treatment. And those are probably gonna need procedures. But smaller scars, shallower scars, those can sometimes just improve by managing the acne well. And there are some topical treatments that we'll talk about that can help here as well. When it comes to treatments for acne scars, the topical treatment that has the best evidence that can be helpful are topical retinoids. And here it does seem that stronger is better. For acne, we talk about consistency beats intensity. When it comes to treating acne scars, atrophic acne scars, intensity does seem to matter. Stronger, more potent topical retinoids like tazeratine and triferritine may work better for atrophic acne scars than milder, less potent ones like adapalene and trenoin. So for atrophic acne scars, if that's your goal of treating, the strongest retinoid we can tolerate really does make a difference. And having a retinoid in an optimized vehicle, like some of these lotion formulations or using microencapsulation technologies to help reduce irritancy, the common side effect and limiting factor with topical retinoids can be really important when it comes to treating acne scars. So for atrophic acne scars, for small ones, topical retinoids can be a helpful part of an overall treatment plan. However, for bigger and deeper acne scars, for rolling scars, any topical treatment is honestly probably not gonna do a lot. And people can often spend quite a bit of time and money pursuing various over-the-counter and prescription topical treatments that probably aren't gonna solve the problem. And this is where we really need different procedures to help soften and address these scars. 
When it comes to rolling scars, I mentioned earlier, a big factor here is tethering of the skin to scar structures under it. And there's a technique called subcision, where one takes a needle or another type of device similar to that, you get it under the skin, right under the dermis, and you're kind of running it along the bottom. You're trying to break up those adhesions and those scars that are pulling that scar down and creating that rolling scar. And this can be quite effective. Often you'll do this procedure and the scar will just pop right back up. So for rolling acne scars, subcision can be an incredibly effective treatment modality to help improve them. For other atrophic acne scars, as I mentioned, the fundamental problem is there's been this loss of collagen in the skin. We've lost that structural scaffold and we have a depression because of it. And almost all treatment modalities work on the principle of we're trying to help rebuild, stimulate collagen, often by causing some kind of injury in the skin to turn on a healing response. One strategy is filler, so we can inject something into the skin to try to replace that lost collagen, that lost kind of material that was holding the skin up and holding it together. And fillers can improve acne scars, though often in more of a temporary way, the filler provides some improvement, lasting for months to sometimes a few years, but then it gradually is lost over time. So fillers can be helpful, but often provide temporary results. There are some special kinds of fillers like polymethyl methacrylate, which can provide a more durable improvement in scars, but with more durable results also comes potentially more lasting side effects. So there have unfortunately been some case reports of people getting reactions to these kind of products and having really long lasting complications from these treatments. So I do think they have to use very carefully. Moving beyond fillers, now we get into things that really cause a true healing response, stimulation of collagen production in the skin. And one of the first strategies that we think about is microneedling. This is where a device is used that has lots of little tiny needles in the skin. They kind of often are a stamping type of tool. They're moved around across the face. They're basically causing these little tiny micro injuries to the skin at various steps. You can control that with the device. You can decide how deep you want to be depending on where you're treating on the face and what the goals are. And that's gonna help stimulate a healing response. It can sometimes be done with different kinds of medications as well to augment it. And that healing response is gonna to help to soften acne scars and help fill in that lost collagen over a series of treatments. Microneedling can be a really nice treatment in that it's a relatively low downtime procedure. The healing process from it is usually relatively quick. It can work in all different kinds of skin tones and skin types. So it can be a nice, valuable treatment and it can be a good initial option, especially for more mild atrophic acne scarring. Another technique is called radiofrequency, ablation or radiofrequency device techniques. And these are kind of similar to microneedles. There's these small needles or electrodes that are put into the skin, but unlike microneedling where just the needles themselves are causing an injury, with radiofrequency techniques, then current is applied to those needle. That creates heat under the skin in the deeper structures, so able to avoid hurting the top layer of the skin, the epidermis trying to avoid causing a burn. And we're causing this injury to the deeper layers in the skin. We're stimulating a healing response. And this again can help build collagen and can help soften atrophic acne scars. Another approach to doing this is using a laser. So we can use fractional ablative lasers, we can use non-ablative lasers to cause, again, an injury to the dermis of the skin, an injury to the collagen in the skin that'll help stimulate some healing, new collagen production, and can help to, again, soften these acne scars. Depending on the type of device used, that downtime can be relatively minimal to more moderate. And certainly, ablative laser devices can have some pretty meaningful downtime associated with them, but also can deliver some very impressive results. Another technique that can be especially helpful for smaller ice fix scars is using a localized chemical peel to induce that kind of injury and healing response. There's a technique called TCA cross, where a high concentration of trichloroacetic acid, often 70 to 100%, is precisely applied into the scar using a needle or a toothpick or some other device. That causes that localized image injury to the skin. It stimulates that collagen healing response and for Ice pick acne scars, this can often be a very effective strategy to help soften them and improve them. Finally, another way to deal with scars is to just try to remove them, to excise them. For really small ice pick scars, sometimes doing a small punch excision can heal quite well and can really improve the appearance of that area of the skin. Another approach for wider, bigger boxcar scars is to do a punch elevation. So you do similar, you kind of do a punch biopsy or some technique to help free up the edges of that depressed boxcar scar, you lift it up so that it's aligned with the skin surrounding it and then sutured in place. And that's another technique that when healed can often give nice improvements in that boxcar scar. Now moving on to hypertrophic scars, 
Here the main technique is there's too much collagen there, right? We need to get it to come down. Of course, you could try to excise it. That sometimes we can do for very severe keloidal lesions is to excise it. But a treatment strategy is often very helpful is to inject some steroid medicine, some intralesional steroids into these hypertrophic or keloidal scars to get them to flatten out, to help basically cause a side effect of steroids in the skin atrophy to reduce that overproduction of collagen, that excessive inflammation that's happening in hypertrophic and keloidal scars. Intralesional steroids can be a very effective treatment for these kinds of scars to help flatten them out and make them more even. It does need to be done thoughtfully. Sometimes if too high of a concentration of steroids is used or if it's not placed in the right place in the skin, there is some risk of causing light marks or even if you go too far, causing depression, um, making it become too depressed. But intralesional steroids are very safe and often very helpful treatment for hypertrophic scars in the skin. Now we've talked a lot about treating acne scars, but of course, a really important aspect of this is preventing acne scars. If we don't have a good acne treatment regimen on board, if the acne isn't controlled and there's ongoing new breakouts happening, new inflammation in the skin happening, we're just gonna be playing whack-a-mole. We're gonna be fixing and improving some scars, but then new scars are gonna be appearing. So a critical part of any treatment plan for acne scars is getting really good control of the acne. And in people who are more prone to getting acne scars, that's a reason to be a little bit stronger in our treatment approach at the beginning. In fact, it's even an indication for thinking about medications like isotretinoin and Accutane. So when we're treating acne scars, it's really critical that we get the acne really well controlled to avoid having new inflammation, new scars forming. So to put it all together, there are two main types of acne scars. There's a trophic acne scars, these are depressed, and there are hypertrophic acne scars, these are raised. For atrophic acne scars, there are a variety of techniques that can be helpful. For rolling scars, where there's tethering under the skin that's pulling that down, subcision can be a very valuable treatment. And for all kinds of atrophic scars, treatments that help stimulate collagen formation in the skin, whether that's topical retinoids for mild scars, lasers, microneedling, radiofrequency devices, these can all help to stimulate that collagen production and fill in and soften those atrophic acne scars. For hypertrophic and keloidal acne scars, where there's too much collagen formation that's leading to a bump in the skin, things like intralesional steroids that can help to lessen that overhealing, lessen that inflammation, and reduce that collagen production to help flatten out and soften those scars can be a very helpful treatment. And then, of course, when it comes to treating acne scars, it's critical to treat the underlying acne well. If we don't do that, we're never going to succeed in getting those scars to really go away and stay away. Now, you may have noticed in this video, I did not talk at all about dark marks or red marks. Sometimes people view these as a form of acne scarring as well. This acne-associated macular erythema and hyperpigmentation, these marks that are left behind by acne, I put them in a little bit of a different category because these can often improve with time and just good acne treatment. However, there are a variety of strategies that can help make these go away faster because these can be quite persistent and extremely bothersome. And we go over that in some separate videos that are dedicated to that topic. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, please consider subscribing to the channel. Your support means a lot to me and give this video a like so we can share it with more people in the community. Ask me your questions about acne and acne scarring in the comments below. And until next time, see ya.